I'm standing here in front of an Audi that's been fitted out with the latest driverless car technology from Delphi. Uh, and one thing you'll notice about this is that all those spinning LiDAR and radar sensors and cameras you, you're accustomed to seeing uh, on the outsides of driverless cars, and they're, they're now all getting built into the body. So this is becoming much more like the car you'd see on the road every day, and the costs of those sensors are coming down. So this gives you one idea of how much closer to reality it's becoming. I'm gonna get inside and take a drive around. This is how driverless cars look today. A human still at the wheel ready to take control, and a screen that shows what the car is seeing through its cameras and sensors as an approximation of what it'll be like in a, in a driverless car in the future. This feels pretty much like it, except of course, that when we're not driving, we might have to reimagine everything about the inside of this car. Will we all be sitting here uh, as passengers, gazing out of the window as we always have done in the past? Or will we be free to think about this entirely differently? Some of the world's biggest car makers and tech companies have been trying to answer that question. There are some obvious futuristic touches to the concept cars on display at this year's Consumer Electronics Show, like steering wheels that look like the joysticks of Starship fighters and which fold away when the car is driving itself. But the biggest differences are harder to see. For instance, rather than us supervising the cars, the cars will be supervising us. A large hardware set that basically would monitor a lot of your your, your biometric feedback, you know, your perspiration. It's basically you know measuring pupil dilation, those kind of things. Trying to basically understand how you're feeling. You know, is this traffic pattern making you upset? You know, is there things in the car that are distracting you? And it's going to basically you know try ways to kind of uh, accommodate your mood and. I don't want to say entertain you, but make you the entire experience more pleasant, more enjoyable. In these cars of the future, screens will disappear to be replaced by heads-up displays, holograms, or projections on the windows and the car walls. It will be like being in a virtual cocoon, as the car uses your digital identity to personalize your media or turn the cabin into an extension of the office. You're in the car? You're in your home, you're in the office. You should have no uh, breakage of even five minutes drop off when you move from car to office, it should be seamless. That's your profile you carry with you. What we're doing is all cloud-based and it's seamlessly transporting and that's something we're working with Microsoft and Google and Samsung and IBM to make that patchwork solution into seamless. So you control it, I control it, you preserve it with your own authenticated password. No one has access to your profile. It will be some years before all of this is on the road, but when it does come, it will certainly be a better experience than today's texting while driving. This is Richard Waters for the Financial Times in Las Vegas. Three of those, then easily able to take over the vehicle.